Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Chevrolet Silverado 3500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the B&W Custom Installation Kit with base rails for a fifth wheel trailer hitch. To me, having a custom fit kit is really important. Knowing that it's designed and set up to work perfectly with your truck would really give me that peace of mind whenever I'm going down the road with a heavy trailer. And after working with many different types of fifth wheel trailer hitches, I will say the one thing that stands out to me about BMW is how well built they are. Everything's really solid, it's put together nicely, the fit and finish is usually almost always perfect. And that's just one more thing you're not gonna have to have in the back of your mind when you are pulling that heavy trailer, is worrying about if something's gonna fail or anything like that. With a BMW, you really can't go wrong. Now, even though the rails themselves are B&W, they realize that everyone might not have a B&W fifth wheel head to go on them. And if that's your situation, that's okay, because these are somewhat universal and work with many of the popular fifth wheel heads. That way you have some options if you already have an old fifth wheel head and want to use that for the time being and maybe upgrade in the future. Now, even though the rails are above the bed, they're gonna be pretty low profile in my opinion. They're not gonna take up a ton of space. So really, if you do decide to put anything in your bed, I really don't see them giving you any issues. And since they do have a really thick, tough powder coat finish, if you do happen to throw some lumber back here or maybe some other types of materials, you're not gonna to have to worry about banging these up and scratching them at all. So at the end of the day, you just really can't go wrong with a B&W. Compared to some of the other ones, you can tell that the craftsmanship just goes above and beyond, and it's made right here in the USA. So whether you're towing your horse trailer down to the farm, or maybe even your camper to go enjoy some time with your family, you know you can rely on your hitch to get you there safely. Now because this kit is custom, as far as the installation goes, it is going to be relatively simple. Some of the bolts can be a little bit tricky to get to, but as long as you take your time, you shouldn't have any issues getting this all set up properly. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin your install, what I did was just temporarily remove our spare tire underneath the truck. That way it'll just give us a little bit more room to work later. Now we can hop up in the bed of our truck and take a few measurements to determine the location that our rear rail needs to be positioned in. The measurements are in the instructions and they'll differ if you have a long or short bed so be careful to pay attention and find the proper measurement but where you want to measure is from the end of the bed itself you don't want to measure from the tailgate and if you have a spray and bed liner like we do today you want to take that into account too the thickness of it with that being said I made a few marks here and once we have our marks laid out we need to make sure that our rail will be centered. So what you can do is measure from your wheel well to the edge of the rail and you want that distance to be the exact same on each side. Once we have it laid out centered at that proper length we can move to the holes in our rails and mark them to know where we need to drill. So the holes that we're gonna be using will be this one and this one on each side of our rail. And I just used a white paint pen to put a dot here in the center, that way I didn't lose my location if I did happen to bump the rail or something. But what I'm gonna do is take a center punch, put it right there in the center of the hole, and make a little indention. Do the same thing for this one. And we can move on to the center of the rail. The hole we're gonna be using is just one, and it will be this one right here. Again, I put a little mark there and I'll grab my punch. Again, put an indention in it. And if we continue on to the other end, same setup as the other side. I'll be using this hole and this one. So once I have these intentions made, I can move the rail out of the way and make some pilot holes. So 
So I'm going to be using a small bit to create our pilot holes. Now, just to be on the safe side before you start drilling, it's not a bad idea to look underneath the truck and make sure you're not going to accidentally drill into something of importance. So I checked underneath there. We're good to go. So I'll create pilot holes for all five of our marks here. Now we can move into our wheel well openings. Now if your truck has a plastic wheel well liner, you are gonna need to remove that. In our case, our truck does not. And if your truck has overload brackets, you're gonna to have to take out some of those factory bolts. In our case, our truck does have the overload brackets. This one here in the front of the truck, we're gonna to need to pull out these two bolts. So I'll use a 18 millimeter socket to do that. And then if we move to the back overload bracket, we're also going to need to take out these two bolts. Now these are a little different. They actually have nuts on the inside of the frame. So we're gonna have to get underneath the truck and get a wrench on those nuts. That way we can hold them tight and be able to remove our bolts. Now underneath the truck, just to give us a little bit more working room, I'm going to remove this heat shield here. And that's gonna be held in place with two bolts. So I'll pull those out using a 13 millimeter socket. So I have this lowered, I'll just set it off to the side for now. With the heat shield out of the way, if you look right here on the inside of our frame rail, we're going to have two holes. And that's where those nuts are that we got to hold steady. That way we can remove our overload bracket bolts. So this hole and this hole, I'll just use an 18 millimeter socket to hold them steady. What we can do now is get our hardware in place for our rear frame brackets. So you're under the truck on the inside of a frame rail. We're gonna be working with these two holes again. What we're gonna do is take one of our pole wires and we're gonna take the coil bend and one of these frame brackets or frame spacers rather. And we're gonna put the coil bend through one end of the hole. It really doesn't matter which one. We'll slide that over the coil bend and then we're gonna take our carriage bolt and thread that onto the pole wire. And what we're gonna do is take the other end of our pole wire, the straight end, push it in the top hole close to the bed of our trough and out the other side. So this will come through the hole where we removed our factory bolts. So push that all the way through. Once we have that wire pushed all the way through, we can take this block and our carriage bolt, try to get it started just a little bit, slide it into the hole inside of the frame. Then we're gonna pull that fish wire to get our carriage bolt to go through that factory opening there. So this is where it's coming out. It can be a little tight, so you may have to kind of tap the Head of the carriage bolt just to help it through a little bit. So we want to get that bolt all the way through just like that. Now for this bottom hole here we're going to take another one of our pull wires and this time we're just going to thread on a carriage bolt onto the coiled end. Now what we're going to do is take the straight end of our pull wire and pass it through the spacer block that we put inside of the frame and out of the factory hole. Now in this case, you wanna make sure that the square hole and the spacer block lines up with that factory hole. That way the carriage bolt will go through the spacer block and our frame rail. 
we'll push that through and work it all the way out to the other side just like we did the one on top. Again, if it's a little tight, you might have to help it out and just kind of tap on the head of that carriage bolt. You also want to be sure too that the square part of our carriage bolt goes through that square opening in our block. So you may have to kind of twist it around to get it to line up and push completely through properly. Once both of our bolts are through, we can go ahead and just take off that pull wire one at a time. I'm going to make sure that the bolt does not fall back into the frame. So you can kind of just put some pressure on it with your finger. We're going to take one of these retainers and just thread that onto the bolt. That way it'll keep it in place. We're just going to tighten it up snug with our hands until it's nice and flat against our frame. I do the same thing for this one down here as well. At this point, we can loosely secure our rear side plates. Now these are side specific, so you wanna make sure to check your instructions to make sure that you have the correct side. What we're gonna do is take these two holes in our side plates and put them over the carriage bolts. Now, if your truck does not have the overload brackets, what you would do is put on these spacers one on each carriage bolt. If your truck has the brackets like ours does, we can discard these. So we'll just get rid of those. Take our side plate, slide it over the carriage bolts. And then each carriage bolt is going to receive a split lock washer and a hex nut. We'll go ahead and get both these started hand tight. And that's how it'll look once we have our hardware hand tight. Now over here on the driver's side, it's set up the exact same way. So I just repeated that same process over here. Now what we want to do is hop up in the bed of our truck and we want to make sure that the pilot holes that we drilled on each side line up with the holes in our side plates. So I figured we can just use our pull wires since we have them on hand. I just took the straight end of them, pushed them down through the pilot holes and then we can kind of go underneath the truck just make sure that they actually go through the holes in our side plates that way, if we need to make any adjustments, we can before we drill. Here underneath the truck, to give you an example, you can see our pull wire does indeed come down through the bed and through the hole in our bracket. So you just wanna make sure all of them are set up that way. Now back up here in our bed, since we verified our pilot holes do indeed line up with the holes in our brackets, we can use a larger bit to drill them out to the proper size. Now that we have our holes drilled, I'll go ahead and grab my vacuum and clean up our mess. Since the holes that we drilled now have some bare metal exposed, I do like to put a little paint over that just to help prevent any potential corrosion. I'm just using a paint stick to cover up that bare metal. Gives us a little bit cleaner look in the end, but if you don't have one of these, you could always just take some clear or black spray paint and protect it that way. After we give our paint a couple minutes to dry, we can take our rail and slide it into position. We're gonna line up all five holes, and then we can take a carriage bolt for each hole and push it down 
through our rail and through our bed. Now underneath of our truck, all of the bolts that we put in from the top side on the bottom side are going to receive the same hardware combination. What we're going to do is take one of these U-shaped spacer blocks and put that in between our frame bracket and the bed of our truck. That'll kind of fill in that gap there from the corrugation. It can be a little tight, so you might want to grab a screwdriver or poker or something like that to help get it into place. That U-shape portion is going to kind of go around our bolt. And if you have to, you can kind of push on the frame bracket itself. It'll give you the room you need to sneak that in there. Once we have it kind of wrapped around the bolt there, what we can do is grab an offset spacer block. You can see the hole is offset to one side. We're going to put that on, followed by a split lock washer and then a hex nut. We're going to get that started hand tight and we're going to do that for all the remaining bolts. And just to kind of give you a better look, the bolt that's in the center of our bed is going to get that same hardware combination, but it's a little bit easier to see. So we'll kind of slide that U-bolt in place. I'm sorry, that U-shaped spacer, followed by that offset spacer block. Put on our split lock washer. And finally, our hex nut. Now that we have the rear rail loosely into position, we can work on the front rail. Now, what's going to determine the location of the front rail is the base of our fifth wheel itself. So what I did is just kind of put our front rail just loosely into position. This is kind of where I think about where our fifth wheel is going to sit. What I'll do is grab the base of our fifth wheel, put it into the rear rail, and then line up our front one with the tabs on the base. And that'll give us a really good starting point on where we need to position our front rail. So I went ahead and set our base in. And what you wanna do is make sure that the front rail is centered in the bed of our truck, just like we did the back one. I'm gonna measure the distance from your wheel well to the edge of the rail on each side, make sure it's the same. And then to ensure that our base has a nice tight fit once we do have everything bolted down, what you wanna do is take the base and just push it towards the back of the truck as much as you can. Then you're just gonna grab each side of the front rail and just kinda of pull it towards the front of the cab as much as you can. That kinda of takes that slack out in between there. After you do that, again, it's not a bad idea to measure again just to be certain that you're all centered up. From there, we can mark our attachment points and drill out our pilot holes. On the ends of the rail, we're gonna be using this hole and this hole. Go ahead and grab our pilot bit. I'm gonna make sure these are centered as best as you can. We move to the center of the rail. We're gonna have one attachment point. It will be this one here, closest to the cab of our truck. And on the other end of the rail, it's gonna be the same setup as the other side. So we'll get all these pilot holes drilled out.
Once our pilot holes are drilled, we can go ahead and move the base out of the way, as well as the front rail. And then we can grab our larger drill bit and drill these holes out to the proper size. Just like the back rail, I'll vacuum up our mess and cover up that bare metal with some paint. Now back in our wheel well, we can install our front frame brackets. Now these are side specific, so be sure you have the right side. And the way these are gonna work is these two holes here in the bracket are going to line up with these two holes here where our overload brackets were bolted down. Now, what we're gonna do to secure that is just hold our frame bracket, our front bracket rather, up in position and use these two included bolts to get it secured just hand tight. Now, if your truck did not come equipped with these overload brackets here, there is a different hardware combination that you're going to use to secure the front frame plates and you can find that information in your instructions. With that being said, I'm going to take this, push it into place, and then just get our bolt start. Once we have this one hand tight, the other side is set up the same way. So we're just going to repeat that process over there. These bolts can get a little tough to turn since there's a lot of undercoating on the frame that can kind of bind it up sometimes. So if you have to, what helps to get them completely hand tight, just take a socket with an extension and run them down that way. You get a little more leverage on them. Now back up in the bed, you can line up our rail with the holes that we drilled and take our carriage bolts and slide them through the rail, through the bed, into position. For all five of our carriage bolts that's securing our front rail down, I Got all the hardware here underneath started hand tight. And I just used the same combination of hardware that we used for the rear rail. I put in a U-shaped spacer block underneath the bottom of her bed. And then I used a offset spacer with a split lock washer and a hex nut. So I used that same setup for all five bolts. Now we can tighten up and torque all of the hardware that's securing our rails inside of our bed. Once you have all the hardware that's securing the rails inside the bed, tighten down, you come back with the torque wrench and tighten them to the amount specified in the instructions. Once our rails are torqued on, we can move over here to our plates on the side of our frame and tighten and torque them down as well. Now that we have everything torqued on, I went ahead and reinstalled our heat shield and raised our spare tire back up into position. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the B&W custom installation kit with base rails for a fifth wheel trailer hitch on our 2020 Chevy Silverado 3500.